And now are we going to be looking straight up here? Or? I guess you're supposed to, yeah. I just okay. get shy sometimes and I don't. But I forgot your name one more time. I'm Wayne. Wayne Majewski. 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 Hi, this is Debbie Priestley. This is Stone Soup. We're on Be Live, and we are live, um, at least right now, anyway, at uh, 5 o'clock on Wednesday night. Um, and I just sort of wanted to mention that because I bumped into somebody on the street the other day who said they tried to call in at 10 o'clock at night, I think on a Sunday night. And that's um, basically right now, if you want to call in, you have to do it now, or at least after we read poems. Um, because after that, it's just the recording of it showing again. So um, this is Stone Soup Poets. Um, there's only, I think, as far as I know, there's only one other poetry show other than this one, and it's with Jacques. Jacques. Um, so this is unusual, in a way, I guess, poetry on the air. So if you do call, um, and I would suggest you wait until we read poems, the number will be, you can write this down, 617 Eight seven six zero zero five five. That's six one seven eight seven six zero zero five five. And you can call, you know, after we read some poems, maybe about ten minutes or fifteen minutes or so. And you know, if you want, read one of your poems on the air, which is a cool thing to do. You can say your name, and if you're too shy, you don't have to say your name. But uh, you know, get the word out there because that's what we're about. Um, and when I'm not doing this, I'm at out of the blue art gallery trying to sell paintings, or I'm painting. Um, or I'm trying to get poems together, and that's at 106 Prospect Street in Central Square, Cambridge, Mass. Um, anyways, I have a guest today, and your name is? Wayne Majewski. Wayne Majewski. Um, and what do you consider yourself, Wayne, uh, as far well, as poetry goes? <clears throat> as far as poetry goes, uh, um, I, I do a lot of comedic stuff, but I, I do some serious things, too. Uh, you can't just live by comedy alone, and uh, sometimes you die by it, so oh you have God. to write serious yeah, things. Yeah, just like poetry. Oh, oh yes. Okay. Oh, yes. I can relate to that, I okay. guess. I don't want okay. to relate to it, but I can. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll, I'll just try to be honest. <laughs> okay, okay. And that's important. Um... Have you, um, what made you get into poetry? Was it you fell into it, or you like poetry, or you like reading it? Or? I love art. Art, uh, I'm a real art jock. You know, I, I like paintings, I like uh, uh, poetry. I, I write poetry, I write short stories, uh, I've written okay. a novel, you know, like everybody else. But uh, what I want to do is get out and perform it and find a publisher and, and all that. And be out there, yes, yes. How many poems do you think you've written, or at least, well, guessing? Guessing, uh, I think at last count it's 2,106. Oh my God. Yes. That's like so exact. Yes. Well, it is. <laughs> it, it was. 2,006. It's, it's actually 2,104 of them, but there are two others in a new volume I'm working on if I ever wow. get a chance to, uh, if I ever get a day off to write it again. Okay. <laughs> when you're not writing poetry, what are you, what else do you do? Or? Well, I work as a security guard. Uh, I'm okay. uh, over at the uh, Springfield Country Club, which is, uh, oddly enough, in West Springfield, Massachusetts. Oh. So I, I have no idea how it got over there, but maybe they moved it in the middle of the night. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, other than that, um, you know, I read. I'm heavily into videos. Uh, you know, fan of Charles Bronson. Uh, Joan Severance is my favorite actress. I don't like R-rated movies that much, but I think she's a very, very talented actress. Um, I love Barbara Stanwyck movies. Oh, wow. You know, that's uh, that's kind of me in a nutshell. That's cool. Um, and you ha we were talking earlier, and you were starting to list some poets that you admire. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, would you want me to go down that litany? Sure. <laughs> okay. Why not? All right. Somebody might be watching. <laughs> Somebody might be actually like, might watch and listen. Yeah, actually, people, I I didn't know this really until like a few weeks ago that there are actually people that watch this show. They may not always call in, but they're actually watching. Um, and a lot of times they'll stop me uh, in Central Square and say, I really liked it when you did this on your show, or I liked it when you, and I'm just like floored because I really have a, I don't know, I just didn't know that a lot of people like to watch anything with poetry. Oh, yeah. But I guess they do. So well, goodness so gracious. Good. <laughs> if, if I got the station back out in Hatfield, I'd be watching all the time, Yeah, too, I but. think I would be, too, if I had a TV. <laughs> but right. I don't. So. Well, as, as far as poets go, uh, and, and this is basically a poetry show, everybody loves Walt Whitman. Everyone except James Tate, who's one of the people I'll mention here, too. Uh, James Tate had, a, had a, a poem about Walt Whitman that was kind uh -oh. of... Uh, 
Well, you know, I think he was just making fun of Walt Whitman. I don't know. Maybe it was like and, a, and the a leaves Saturday of grass. Or... Yeah. Well, leaves of grass is pretty much his only thing, and he wrote it his whole life. And I loved a noiseless, patient spider, and uh, out of the uh, out of the cradle, endlessly rocking. I thought both were uh, were extremely yeah. good poems. Yep. Um, I also love. Um, Oh God, I'm um, trying to think now. Bei Dao, he's a Chinese poet and he was around during the Tiananmen Square um, uprising. He happened to be, uh, I guess, out in Europe at the time and the Chinese government, um, they, they kept his, his wife and his four-year-old daughter for six years in China and oh wouldn't let God. him back. He, he's, he's still banned from uh, ever coming back into China. Um, the poem by him that I really liked was called um, A Song of Migrating Birds. Wow. And um, Audrey Lord, of course, you love Audrey Lord. I like Audrey uh, Lord and um, Adrian Rich. Okay. And, although some of Adrian Rich's poems are too serious for me sometimes. Okay. I mean, I like her, but there are sometimes I say I'm not in the mood for this right now. Okay. You know? And the same with Sylvia Plath. I love what? Sylvia Plath, but. Sometimes I actually look at it and go, oh, God, no, not right now. Well, I, you know, I, I guess if you're into the suicidal uh, X yeah. Smith College grad, yeah, then, then Sylvia Plath is the woman for you. Not all her poems are, but yeah. they're not all dark, but there's yeah. definitely a few in there that are like, do I really want to read this right now? Yeah. <laughs> if I'm over the edge just a little bit, do I really want to be thrown all the way complete over the edge? Or, well, so you know. I, I trust that you've read uh, The Black Unicorn. Yes. Okay. And uh, um, what is your opinion of uh, a litany for survival? Uh, I just think that's like something out of Tolstoy. That, that is, that's the most incredible poem I've ever read in my entire life. Is, um, I know I liked it. I did, I, it's been a while, though. I have to reread things constantly okay. because I'm sort of a space shot. Like okay. I really have to okay. digest it again, you know, yeah. so I don't remember yeah. that one. Well, that was the one about... Um, she she just goes on and on about everything that that they tr that people try to do in life. Someone tries to take it away from them, oh. and it's it was just very poignant the way that she uh, went about doing that. I wrote a poem called Obstacles. I don't have oh, it with me, but that's similar. You'll, you'll but, have to you'll have to read that for me. Yeah, well, yeah. When you get a chance. So. Um, I usually um, start off the show with a few poems, so I might do that. This is a book. I have called The Woman Has a Voice. I wrote this last year. And trust me, the woman does have a voice. Here, I do. So. <laughs> Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm quiet, believe it or not. Oh, goodness. But, but today I have a voice. Um, so I might read a few poems and then let you do your thing. All right. Because I don't even know what you're going to do. Well, my stuff is, is memorized because a lot of it I like to do on stage. So, I mean, I have okay. to memorize it. So. That's, I wish I could do that. I'm oh, not, goodness. It's, uh, That's a cool thing to be able yeah, to do. Yeah. I, um, All right. So what do you got here? Uh, Did, oh, um, I might as well throw in the uh, the aside with uh, James Tate, who, of course, I mentioned before as having uh, written a, a poem that was kind of critical of Walt Whitman, which I'm not sure he's... I, I think he likes Walt Whitman just like we all do. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he just was kind of razzing him in the poem. But James Tate has this poem that was called thinking ahead to possible options and a worst case scenario about a squirrel that runs out into the middle of the road and he has to jam on his brakes and then a skunk walks by and the way he did it was just so tremendously artistic and it what was one was of the funniest called? things. Yeah. It was called thinking ahead to possible options and a worst case scenario and it's from his book Memoir of the Hawk. Wow. Yeah, he's, he's a Pulitzer Prize winning uh, author and uh, he teaches over at UMass Amherst. Wow. If anybody's interested, uh, hmm. find his website and, uh, and bedevil the man. Yeah, writing about a squirrel. I've written about squirrels, too. I actually, um, at the gallery, we had um, someone, his last name was Mel Shoren. He's a doctor, actually, and he had a whole book called Roadside something. It, it, was, it was something really out there, but it was about roadside um, killings. Okay. Um, and okay. it was all poetry about things that you find dead in the road. And, oh, goodness. Um, and it was actually pretty good. There were some that were kind of disgusting, but... Um, well, is it along lines of Loudon Wainwright with his dead skunk in the middle of the uh, road? Yeah. <laughs> Staking I don't know, but it was just like, I was shocked. I was like, oh my goodness, this is what he writes about. But um, it, he sold a few. 
Well, and See, that just proves you can write about well, anything. Po poetry, yes. Poetry can, believe it or not, be written about anything by anyone. Poetry is the voice of the underprivileged speaking out against That's oppression. Right. Yes, That's it is. Right. That's why we're all uh, uh, having so much trouble paying our rent, you know, because uh, <laughs> the right wing, they don't like that. No, they, <laughs> they don't. They don't like people speaking out against them. No, but, they don't. They just want everybody to accept whatever comes their way. Okay. Um, I'm going to read... Left-wing poets can be rather nasty, too, so it ain't just the right-wing ones. Who, no, let's, uh, let's see. I'm going to read... Um, it's Poetry the Way You Speak. All right. The snow is more beautiful as I watch it flow from the distance, like your hair, crimson river, melting in the memory of sun. It is poetry the way you speak. The emptiness of time circles my heart. I feel lost in this wind, white stars redeeming. There's no solitude here. Mm -hmm. I wonder if heaven is like this, a garden of diamonds unexplored, interrupted sleep, flurried ascension, glimmer and steam for these dreams. Like your eyes reveal a giving similar to this drifting. Life is a dance. We surround the air like dandelions, and each part of us fades away. Well, that's great. That's fantastic. And uh, it, it has a little bit more substance than the, uh, did you ever hear the, uh, the oh God, it was the, the Cheech and Chong one, the old one about <laughs> Sister Mary Elephant, remember? Yes. Where she's, the sun kisses the morning skies, yes, the yes. birds kiss the butterflies. And that, then, This one was much more thank substantive. You. I like that. I'm very happy I know. with that. I'm happy that too. Goodness. Um, I wrote this, um, somebody kept asking me to write about rage, and that's one of my most difficult hmm. topics. I don't really like to write about rage. Okay. So this one's very short, and you mentioned you like short poems. Okay. Rage. When paper burns, the curling pieces roll swiftly inward, further and further into its crumbling black remains. Not much different from how anger fires the soul, splitting delicate weeds of denial, devouring growth. When paper burns, it never returns to its form again, loose dust that soon fades away. Some would, some would ask, was it ever useful? Well, you, you ought to read that one to the two guys over at the Out of the Blue Gallery right now. I mean, they... I know. <laughs> <laughs> Here at the Out of the Blue Gallery, we have um, this nice... I, I, I just want to mention something about Out of the Blue Gallery, now that you brought that up. Out of the Blue Gallery is gay-friendly. Totally. Now, you might be asking out in TV land, so what? I didn't ask if you were or whatever. But I just think it's important to say that because a lot of okay. art galleries, um, you know, they might sort of, it might be a hint of that in the atmosphere, but they're just not out about it. You okay. Know? At, out of the gallery, we are out and about. Okay. So. I just have to say that on public TV, if you're gay, you will fit in at what? Out of the Blue Gallery. <laughs> totally. I, I, I would also like to put in, just for the heck of it, that they're straight friendly, too. Oh, so. yes, we are straight friendly, too. <laughs> but I, uh, the, the reason I mentioned that was because there's just, I don't know, there's a bitch fest going on right now, okay? okay. So, um, you know, they'll get over it and they'll make friends again, but... Okay. You know. Okay. Yes, there is a bitch fest going on right now at Out of the Gallery. Didn't want to get in the middle of anything. I know. You left just in time. <laughs> you left just in time. Goodness gracious. <laughs> All right. And don't forget to bring presents. No, oh. Like, what, I'm trying to remember what he always says to me. Deborah, um, Deborah, please bring me peach and melon drinks only. Peach, oh. peach and melon. You, you I don't like apple. There should be some bar along the street that would have them, yes. so whatever. Out of the Blue Gallery is located right across from uh, Whole Foods, okay. which is a nice, healthy uh, place, which I'm sure is probably gay, friendly, gay and bi-friendly as well, but I, they're not really out and about about it. But they're learning to tolerate us. That's okay. okay. Um, let's see. What's this one? They have to tolerate out of the blue. We're right across the street. They have the no salsa class. dance class. Yeah. What they have is no that all class. about? <laughs> um, the full moon probably led me there, so white and shiny. There was no need to stay home. Wandering the snowy streets, the sign reading dancing classes inside, sensual twists and hefty claps, one, two, three, one, two, three. Hair spinning, upper chest shake. We are sexual. We are made for touch. And I spin back and forth into arms, not sure who my next partner will be. I believe in the music, and I am lost in the life of burning. 
All right. Well, that sounds like something out of that uh, movie, The Last Days of Disco, with Chloe Savigny and Kate <laughs> Beckinsale. You know, like, I don't know what my next partner is going to be. <laughs> I know. I don't know. I just... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this out. It's around the Christmas season. Um, not that I'm Christian or anything, but I, oh. I like to paint angels. Okay, okay. Um, and if any of you watching are trying to think of that nice present to buy. Um, I'm just trying to get my hair straight after getting rained on all day. It keeps yeah, sticking out in all me directions. Too. Well, <laughs> yeah, I have, I have, unfortunately, I'm not brought up to have straight hair, but um, it was straight this morning. And now it's frizzo. All right. Um, so just envision me as... I don't know. Someone with better hair than I've got right yeah. now, so. I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. All right. I'm not a guy, so they don't notice me at the gallery anyway. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. I'm not a cute young Hispanic well, guy. Well, all right. Well, then I'll make the exception and notice you. <laughs> See, angels. She painted angels, naked, glorious creatures with amazing wings that could carry her faith through the night. Dreaming of white gasping clouds erupting from black formless still. Mm. She painted goddesses oh, with yes. hair the color of heart, shivering a stream of wild flame, lips floating in moments of silence, but eyes revealing the gift of wonder in a sky of blue longing, feeling all. All right. All right. And so um, I okay. do actually paint angels. So okay. If, um, okay. If any of you are out there looking for a gift and you like angels, check it out. So do, do the angels sit still while you paint them? I, it's all in my head. Oh, okay. It's all, you know, I imagine angels playing loops. I can imagine getting an angel with a paintball or something. Oh, no. I'm not doing <laughs> no, that. I'm just kidding. No, but I imagine angels with their arms up, angels floating in space, angels with, um, I don't know, harps and lutes and oh. uh, one was with a candle, okay. holding a candle. And okay. I don't know. I'll take right. suggestions. Okay. Um, and again, for those of you watching, this is our guest today. Your name one more time. I'm <clears> stupid. Wayne. Wayne Majeski. We're at 617-876-0055. This is live. And I'm going to let Wayne re uh, recite some of his poetry. And if any of you out there watching <clears throat> have a comment, or especially a poem is really what we're looking for. Uh, we like poems. Okay. Um, okay. Call in and do it. And you can be any age. Any you, age. You can be a four-year-old child watching this show, although some of the things we said today are, I don't well, know. Well, I'll start you off with one that's, uh, I, I okay. get requested a lot, it, it gets requested both ways. It gets, people want to hear it, and other people don't want to okay. hear it. Okay. Okay, it's <clears throat> Horror at the Wax Bean Museum. Axes, scimitars, dull butter knives, semi-demented artist types display their wares to the languid public. From out of the sea of shapes rumbles a portrait of terror made from bales and bushels of hairy, soggy wax beans. Some huge spider from Patagonia struts across the tiled floor, getting squished inadvertently under the cleaning woman's heel. <laughs> That's kind of my humorous thing. Wow. Yeah. So it ends on that note. Yes. That yes, reminds me of an artist of ours, oh. actually. Um, you met him. I did. Yeah, uh, Dio Polanski. Okay. He, um, okay. uh, did you look at the artwork when you were? I, at I looked at the artwork. I didn't know he he did. Uh, um, he has art. He had this one art piece that showed a guy, a naked man. Oh goodness! This is this is a painting. So if you're young and you can't handle this, change the station. Change mothers, the, oh, mothers out there, before I hear any complaints calling in. I'm about to mention something that could be God considered. God forbid that you should get nude and take a shower sometime. And, and your child catches you. Oh. But you can change the station right now. I'm giving you the warning. I can count to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. All right. Okay. Here it goes. Um, he, D.L. Polanski has a painting of a man re naked with his head in a dog bowl. A dog bowl. With dog food. Um, eating it. Okay, okay. And then another man sticking a knife in somebody's head. It's just really whack. Okay, okay. Um, and it just looks like this living room scene. When you first look at it, it looks like this nice living room scene okay. going on. Like, and has, he has the lamps and the tables, and it looks very quaint and cute and all that. And then you see that, and it's like, holy crap. You know, well, that, yeah. I mean, the, then the art comes rushing out of the picture yeah, at he you. he sold it. Um, when we first had it in the gallery, a lot of people looked at it and said, um, Wow, this is really whacked, or this is really scary, or um, okay. That's that, he sold it because that's because people in the eastern part of the state can afford it. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just you know, there were a lot of comments. And I remember one day, DL is a little eccentric, 
one day, um, he said, hi, um, I have some paintings here at the gallery. He kind of talks like that. Yes, you know, yes, okay. he's very that, choppy about very it. Very yeah. monotone voice. He's a nice guy. But, nice guy. Yeah, yeah. But I remember he goes, I have some paintings here. Want to see one? And this person said, yeah, sure, okay. And he brought them over that painting. And the guy, it was a guy, and he, he kind of looked over at him. He goes, um, that's okay. I don't want to see any more. <laughs> I've seen oh, it that. Okay, he's seen <laughs> enough. All right. <laughs> he maybe was sitting in on the conversation I heard. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I'll let you do another few poems. And Okay, okay. I'll, I'll try to remember uh, artificial jello-based intelligence. Of course you remember the movie Artificial Intelligence. Yep. Uh, I, I kind of ran the concept together. It, it rumbles, it oozes, it grows like warts on the back of a wild hog's neck. And yet it can carry on a conversation with kids or adults on any subject that you'd mention. The government scientists call it AJI, which stands for Artificial Jello-Based Intelligence. So it might come from Mars. Then again, it might come from some creepy dimension of the mind, as yet undiscovered by lesser minds, because as sure as mud is messy, there's something fishy about a room full of government scientists. Ooh, All right. that's interesting. Okay. Um, let me see. Do you have any poems that are holiday poems? Holiday poems. I'm trying to think. So you want something a little bit more upbeat. Hmm. It doesn't have to be, but... Oh, a holiday poem. I'm trying to think. Um, or it could be about food. Food. Well, how, how about... Uh, oh, clams. Clams are food. Clams are good. How about um, happy as a clam shell? You'll like this one because it's very, very, uh, very short. I live in the mud. I never get to run, I never get to jump, I never get to play, but these idiots think I'm happy. My goal in life is to migrate two centimeters before some greasy slob in a duck suit batters me and eats me fried. You wanted food, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, all right. Um, I like to keep them short and simple and, and keep people kind of amused by them. You, do you have a book out yet, or are you thinking oh, about it? have I? Yeah. On my website, I actually have 24 separate books, oh, but I, wow. I like self-publishing because at this point, even the stick illustrations would be prohibitively expensive through most uh, yeah. publishers. What's your website? It's called Wayne's Universe of Bizarre and Exotic Characters. Uh, when you get on there, it's, uh, it's, it's got a... www. Wayne... What yeah. is it again? It's, it, well, it's www.aestheticcreationsbywayne.com. It's all one word, but the C of aesthetic and creations is, is just one C. Okay. So, um, and, and that, of course, has my Wayne's Universe of Bizarre and Exotic uh, Characters on it. You can... Um, I, I have uh, cuttings of all 24 books. I've got uh, vocal cuttings of them. Um, you can read them, like if, uh, if you can't hear, but you can see, you can, you know, you can, you can do either. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a 10 minute, 38 second video with 10 of my crazy poems. Two of the, two of the ones that I just did, actually all oh, three wow. of the ones I just did are on the... Are there pictures? Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, I'll have to check it out. Oh, thanks, and yeah. people that are listening are going to have to check it out. Right. I, uh, I sure hope so. I, I made this trip all the way here from, from, uh, <laughs> from Hatfield, Mass, Hatfield, which Mass. is right next to Northampton, which is another gay-friendly place and lesbian-friendly place. Yes. So, Cambridge, right. Cambridge is definitely, um, right. and we're trying to, the gallery is just friendly towards a lot of different types of yeah. people. We're animal friendly. Oh, yes. Um, I love the cats. I mean, the cats are was wonderful. It me were they meowing at you like crazy? No, no. Uh-oh was just sitting there and, and loved being uh, petted. And uh, the other one, uh, that, was, that one was sitting with Fritz. So, you know, okay. <laughs> I didn't feel like invading his territory, the cat or Fritz. But uh. Well, I, I, all I'm going to say is um, we're going to have to end soon. But um, if okay. you want to visit the gallery and check out the poetry scene Monday nights at 8 and Saturday nights at 8 um, and um, other times just check out check it out and visit and do some shopping and say hi to people I've had a fantastic time here and, and Debbie in particular has been great and uh, well you know Fritz has been okay <laughs> <laughs> and DL well you know he's an artist he's so nervous <laughs> he's neurotic <laughs> what can you do we're all neurotic well, yes know? we are um, and it's a nice rainy day. Um, it was really boring at the gallery today, so we're, I'm hoping that you. It we've takes we've up. got one minute remaining, so yeah. whatever. What the hell? What the heck? You, have it, you got another 30 second poem in no, there? No, oh. but I, I'm just going to leave it open for somebody to call in. Okay. Um, 
Um, I don't know if I have a 30 second poem other than to say that I hope that people call in for poetry. I hope that people come in the gallery do their poetry thing. And I'm looking for guests so, on yeah, the show. I, I, right. I, sh I should have disguised my voice and said, oh, I've got a poem here. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a poem. No, so I'm looking for guests. So come by the gallery at 106 Prospect Street, uh, out of the blue, um, or call. And if you have relatives out in the Northampton, Amherst area, psh, send them here. Yeah. I don't know if that got on. But it did. It didn't. <laughs> okay. But it's all right. <laughs>